Hey guys, welcome to the next part of the Tetris game. So we've kind of been working with these shapes. We've got it rotating now with the up button. And so it's kind of cool. And now what we have to do is we've got to get them to, once they get to the bottom, we need to like s create a new piece at the top of the, of the game and then have that one become part of the game. And that's kind of a weird thing. And I don't know how this is supposed to be done. First of all, I've seen all sorts of ways that people have built Tetris and none of them have done it this way. So I don't know, maybe there is a way, like there is someone like this, but uh, this is just, you know, what happens when Canon and I get together and try to just build something, which is what I think is kind of fun. So here's the task. Um, the idea was, let's write a background grid that's 12 by 24. So that would be basically a 2D array could control all of that. But instead of giving them an X and a Y, we're gonna put in three variables, which would be um, R, G, and B. So we're actually gonna make it a three-dimensional array, and we're gonna call it colors, the name, because it's basically gonna go through so that each of these squares, you know, all of these squares would have their own R, G, B. Now if we do that, and we just initialize them as a new enter, they'll all be zero, so they'll be black by default. The idea is that then, when a shape gets to the bottom, we can have that shape write itself with all of its colors since each of our shapes has a different color, if you remember. So like this one's that color. So that way when it gets to the bottom or whenever it, we, de we, de we tell it to, it will write itself to there, okay? So how are we going to do that? Well, go ahead and Here's, I've kind of given you some instructions. So if you haven't yet done so, create a new class called background. And we're going to write the code right now. So if you want to pause the video um, and try it for yourself, if not, I'll just speed up the speed and I'll get it on. So here we go. Okay, so um, I think I did it. So basically, oh, I know I did, but basically uh, it was basically written for you, I think. You just make a three-dimensional array. The dimensions are 12, because we're gonna go this way, and then 24 down, and then three, because we're just storing the values of R, G, and B. Okay, we don't actually need to store more than that, because the other, so remember, it's weird, because class background can have other attributes, but I just want that array to just store the colors. So as I go through all of those boxes, I'm gonna draw them, and I just need to know what color it is. And where I draw them will be dependent on X and Y, which I'm going to add later. But I don't need them for this, because I'm gonna use the I's and J of the, um, I'm gonna basically just draw it exactly like we did the grid. So the reason I think this is makes sense is because we've already made a grid. In fact, if I were to rebuild this game, which I guess I kind of am rebuilding it, but, I think the grid exercise was good. Um, I'm gonna keep the grid because that's on top of it. Um, but basically the idea is that it's the same principle, only it's a little bit more complicated because we're doing it in a 2D array, a 3D array really. So anyways, the, for the uh, constructor, you basically just initialize a new array for the colors. Okay, so that just basically means it's blank. Remember, all of those values are zero, so I didn't populate them. So I didn't tell you to do that, but if you didn't, if you had gone through and filled them all with zeros, that's fine. You just don't have to. If you just want them all to be zero, you don't do anything, and that's what their default values will be. Um, and then, of course, the W is the width divided by 24. It's the same width of everything. So in the shape we have width equals that, in the grid we have that. So, you know, I could just make a global variable, but I actually mostly just want the exercise of creating classes. And so just coincidentally, I'm using the same variable and yeah, I should be using a global variable, but whatever, it's over. So now for the display method, this is where it got real fun. And I don't know how you did, but I'd love to hear if you want to comment. Um, Basically, you have to go inside of the loop, so you have to do a double for loop, which is pretty familiar if you've been doing 2D arrays, and this is a 3D array, but we're actually gonna access 
just the R, G, and Bs of them. So um, the R, G, and Bs are not even there because these R, G, and Bs are from here, which I didn't even initialize with any value. So those are also zero. So, but later, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store them into here. So right now, I'm just filling it with R, G, and B, right? But really what I need to do is I need to go R equals um, colors, or do I? Yeah, I think I do. Colors I, J, uh, zero, we'll let that one be, we'll let that equal R. We'll say G equals colors I, J, one. And we'll make B equal colors I, J, two. Okay, so kind of like, in the um, shape, I'm letting the first instance represent X and the second represent Y. It's really just your ability to remember what everything represents. In this case, zero represents R, one represents G, and two, the second one represents B, which isn't that hard to remember since you've done RGB a ton of times. Okay, so now let's just run it again to make sure it works. Okay, so you might notice when I run it, it's a bunch of gray stuff. So in the main class, what I did is I created an object of, of class background. I just named it BG so it's less to write. And then I did BG equals new background. And then I took out the background zero. So I'm not gonna wipe the whole screen with, um, with that. That way I can make sure, so by the way, the default is like this gray. This is the default for processing. So if you see that color, no one wrote that. It was just in the thing. So I'm not wiping it with my old thing. So that's why it just shows the shape as it moves down, it leaves its color behind. So when I do it like this, you can see that this black comes from my 2D or 3D array. That came from our background class. Okay, so that's good. So now it's gonna get harder. Now we're gonna go back into the background class and we're gonna write the shape. Now this is weird because you'll notice I've already set it up, but you're gonna say, I'm gonna write the shape in and I'm gonna pass in the shape, the object of the shape. So whatever shape that happens to be, I'm gonna pass that object in. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to like take those values of that shape. I need to know where its X's and where its Y's are because I need to know where to what block in my grid. So go back to the grid real fast. I need to know which X's and Y's it is, so let's just go to the bottom, okay? So when this block is here, it has an X of zero and a Y of 23. I need to know that so I know that to make that box green. So you need to know the X and the Y. You also just need to know the R, G, and B, okay? You're gonna do that for all four of the blocks. So you're gonna go, you're gonna do a loop through the, the shape. Remember in the shape, the um, thing that holds the actual shape is the object that you want to get to is going to be the um, the 2D array called D shape. Okay, so use that to figure out where its X's and Y's are. And for the R, G, and B, you can just get them, say just S dot R. So go ahead, try that, or follow along with me in hyperspeed. Okay, so this is kind of a confusing little, uh, uh, <laughs> it's a confusing method to write because you have to pass in the shape S and then that becomes a problem because how are you going to call it? Because what actually has access to both the shape and the background? And the answer is the world. So we haven't really talked about the world, but in this case, the world is our main program, our main program that has all the shapes. 
You see, this one has all the shapes, therefore it has access to all the shapes. So in order to test your method, you need to somehow call it somewhere in here. So here I just wrote a method called draw shape and it's, it tells the background to call its method right shape and then I pass in the actual shape that we're using. So that is the shape that is live, okay? But then how do I test it? Well, right now I just decided to use the mouse. So I'll test it by drawing, calling draw shape whenever I press the mouse. Now really quick, let's go over how you do it. So um, you go through each block in the shape and you get s dot the shape and then you get the x coordinate, you get the y coordinate, so that is where that block is, okay? And then you take those coordinates and you change the color of the those x's and y's of the first one to its r and then g and then b, okay? And that right there is all it is. Now if I run this, okay, so let's say it's going down and it's it's going it looks everything's the same, but when I press the mouse button, click there, it made an imprint. It wrote it to the screen. So, so far, so good. So that means, obviously that's not what I want my game to do, but that's just my way of testing my method. So that one probably was a little bit harder for you guys to intuitively come up with on your own, but maybe you tested it. If you haven't tested it now, make sure you go ahead and do that. So just draw a little method that will call it, okay? So let me go ahead and now work on the hard part, which is telling this computer when I want to actually do this because I don't want to call it when it, I press the mouse. So we're going to call um, this, uh, let's see, um, we'll call this um, check bottom because when it gets to the bottom that's when it's going to draw the shape. And what we'll do is we'll constantly have the shape checking for it. So right after we have it moving down, we'll have it check bottom. So it doesn't really matter. I'll put this into my thing. So if I just did this right now, this would just constantly draw it. So it would basically be just drawing the shape the whole way down. So I definitely don't want that. So what, I'm going to add some code in here. I'm not just going to draw shape. I'm going to say if, um, let's say shape dot is active okay draw shape so let's just start with that and we're gonna say if it's not active so far so good now let's look at the shape because we need to talk about whether or not the shape is active or not so we start off with this boolean is active okay and then what we do is we haven't declared it at all so what I'm gonna do is I haven't said if it's true or false. So if, if I basically run this, it's just going to draw it the whole way down because it's not active, right? Well, actually it is active, so we need to go through and say that. So when we create the shape, we're going to go active equals true. Okay? So far so good? So now it actually won't just draw it all the time. Okay, but you're like, well, now when it's, it's not going to draw it at the bottom either. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get there, okay? That's the whole point. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, this check bottom part. So here, watch this. You see here where it goes. So you know how we're moving it down? And so then every time we move down, we have to check the bottom, okay? And here, oh, I actually already wrote it. <laughs> so if it gets to the bottom and it's no longer active, I'm going to make it false. Okay. Now, by the way, I'm going to use this same thing, this inactive, later on. So for right now, let me just get to the point where it's writing it to the bottom and creating a new shape. We'll just start with that and we'll call it good because this is already a very long tutorial. And then we'll do the next part, which is getting it to recognize when it's on top of another shape. Does that make sense? So let's just get this part finished and then um, now with my wife who wants me to start cooking, so I need to get that, that going <laughs> anyway. So let's go ahead and finish this off before I get in trouble. So if it is it, um, active, so let's start actually, sorry, back up. Let's make a second shape. So let's actually make two shapes. So we'll call that shape, the second one, we'll call it on deck, okay? And we'll make this one, but the on deck um, equals new shape. And new shape. Okay, so let's just see if that works. It shouldn't show up. Yeah, because we're not displaying it, you see. So we're only displaying shape. We're not showing the one that's on deck. But it's sitting there waiting for us. Does that make sense? 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, if the shape is inactive, draw the shape, okay? Let's make um, shape equals on deck. Okay, so we'll change, we'll change it to the other shape, which is a different shape. And then we'll make um, shape dot is active equals true. So we'll make it so it's true, so it can do its thing again. And what else do we need to do? Uh, let's make on deck, we need to recreate on deck equals new shape. Okay, so now the, we'll probably add more of this stuff later, but let's just see what happens if we do all this stuff. Okay, so we've got a shape, it's going down. Okay, it, it rotates, it gets to the bottom. Oh, and here comes a new shape. So we're done. I can start cooking dinner and my wife won't divorce me. Yay! Now, this is actually really cool. Like, I'm pretty pretty stoked how far this came. When I got to this point, I was like, it's only a matter of time. We're basically building Tetris. However, it's not actually Tetris because of this. Now we have to have it checking, not just for the bottom, but also for the other colors. But honestly, we're almost done. So, hope you enjoyed that video. That was very good. I'm going to go cook dinner, but I'll post this as soon as I'm done with that. And without that, further ado, I'll see you on the next video.